Welcome back to What RT Nibs with General Disturbance. Now this is a GW Tiger P, Geschutzwagen Tiger P. Uh, and it's on the, well, where are we? I think, oh, it's difficult to tell. I think we're on Overlord. Yes, we are on Overlord. And the name of the commander is Schneckenmeister. And if I'm correct in German, that means Snail Champion. I don't know why, no, <laughs> he'll, he'll have to explain it to you why he's a ch snail champion. But, battle is underway. Now, what can I tell you about the GW Tiger P? Well, it's the Tier 8 German SPG. It was based on the Porsche design. It never actually got produced because the chassis that they used, uh, that were produced for the Tiger competition, were actually used for Ferdinand tank destroyers, or uh, what's known as the Ferdinand. Um, they were also known as Elefantes, or Elephants. And Schneckermeister is going into a firing position next to the houses. And I think he's just going to move, yep, that's it. Move next to the house and he's ready to shoot. And we're looking for a target. Okay, and we start off with a T-25 Pilot 1. And then for A-1 Rebel Arise. Oh, he hit the Revel Arise. He aimed at the T-25 Pilot 1, but he got the Revel Arise behind him. And he did damage of 511 hit points on the Revel Arise and 114 on the T-25 with Splash. That's incredible. He aims for one tank, hits another, gets big damage on both. Now, he's got a 37.17 uh, seconds reload. So we have to wait a little while before he's ready to go, but he's close. Okay, he's loaded. Now he's just got to find a target. Well, that T-34-3 is just way too close to that Prima Victoria. He's aiming at it, but he'll have to wait until one of them's dead before he can make his mind up. Okay, going for the IS-6. Well, that IS-6 has got very low health, and one shot will be enough to finish him off. Round out. Oh! Well, the the IS-6 goes down, but he actually hits the T-44, and does 109 hit points of damage to the T-44, and gets stun assist on the IS-6. So that was worthwhile. But the enemy is now pushing through on the east side of the map, and that's putting him in danger. Um, because if they were to push forward, he's the next tank they're going to come across. Okay, so he's aiming for the T-25 pilot again. This is the same one he fired at the first time. And there's the same Revel Arise that he hit the first time. But he's having to adjust his aim. And the problem with the Tiger P is it's got a very narrow, narrow arc of fire. Which means he's getting a lot of reticule bloom. He fires the round in. Oh no, it was just too far behind that T-25. And unfortunately that shell's wasted. You ideally, with these uh, higher tier uh, German RTs, you need to pick stationary targets rather than ones that are moving because the field of fire is so narrow um, that you're going to suffer from a lot of reticule bloom and a lot of inaccuracy. Now, the um, GW Tiger P carried two different types, or rather, it was suggested it would carry two different types of gun. The stock gun was going to be a 17 centimeter Canonan 72. And the top gun was going to be a 21 centimeter Morsa. And I think that was the 21 centimeter just firing at the T25 there. And he got a splash hit for 291 hit points. He also damaged the Emil at the same time for 161. And that Emil is now one shot for anyone. In fact, six hit points. You could just nudge into him and that would kill him. So if somebody wants to ram him, that will be it. Okay, looks like he's going to go for the T-44 now. He's almost loaded. Nope, he's changed his mind. He's going to go for these two. The Rebel Reset and the T-26 E4, the Super Pershing. Dialing in and round out. Oh, he takes out the Super Pershing. And I think he did damage the... the uh, no, he didn't damage the Rebel Reset. Surprisingly, the, the Rebel Reset must have been shielded by the Super Pershing. But he got 1,045 hit points off that T26E4. That's a huge amount from just one shot. He's almost doubled the amount he actually uh, hit points he's earned from that just that one kill. 
It must have hit the engine bay and, and taken him out completely there. Okay, that Revlerice is headed this direction. He needs to be careful. Unfortunately, he's got an obstruction in the way at the moment because he's got a red line. He can't fire. Oh, now he can fire. So he's obviously, whatever it is, he's having to fire over it. And that shell goes in and takes out the Revlerice. And he picks up 154 hit points off that one. Okay, that means virtually all of the enemy, except for Anudez 03, a little further down in the F-line, he's taken out all the enemy, or most of the enemy has been taken out by his team on the east side of the map. And that's good news, because that means he won't have to relocate. There is still an enemy RT out there, and that's the Lorraine 15551. But the problem is that he doesn't know where it is just yet. Probably on the east side of the map, there's a Scorpion G. Now he's loaded, but that it's hiding behind that building. This will be a splash hit if it does go in. Well, it does. 283 of splash. Three critical hits. He must have tracked it. Well, if he if he was tracked, he's undone his track. And it may have been then his um, his crew that suffered that scorpion. But if he can get another round in there, he can certainly, possibly, potentially one shot him now because he's down to 22 hit points. A, a splash would be enough to take him out. Instead, he's going to go for the Lurva. Okay, he's loaded. Round out. Lands directly behind the Lurva for 315 hit points. You see the Shell Crater. RNG said, no, you're not going to hit this tank. And it landed behind. I think if he'd aimed directly at the turret area, I think that more than likely would have actually uh, impacted the vehicle square on. But he can get another shot in now. We know where he is. He's unlikely to have moved out of the way too far. Yet there he is. Dial in and round out. Bit of a snap at the end, but he did actually hit him. 512 hit points. Looks like it was right on the front right hand side of the vehicle 512 hit points is really good he's now up to three and a half thousand hit points of damage it's a good game for an arty if you've got that sort of level there's that scorpion g now he's a one shot and he's still firing and they need to get him out of the game and he's gone okay at 15 british tank destroyer now can he put a shell into this he's loaded round outs Direct hit, 451 hit points, and that brings up the high caliber. So if he can keep this up, he will definitely take home the high caliber medal. There's only four of the enemy left. There's five on his team, three heavies on his team, only one on the enemy's team. But that AT-15 is going to be a real problem because he has got a lot of hit points. Right, there's the Udis. And he's on the other side of that ridge line. There's the Lurva. Now, the Lurva's a one-shot. Dials in and rounds out. And he kills him. Got rid of him. Now they're down to three on the enemy team. The Udes and the AT-15, the tank destroyers, and the Lorraine 15551, which is the RT. Now, we know where the Udes is. He's just hovering the other side of that ridge line. But it's going to be a little while before Schneckermeister can actually uh, get around out. Almost there. He's got three kills so far. And a win eight so far of 7279, which is very good. Okay, the Emil's coming up there. Should be able to spot him if the Udes is there. Schneckermeister is going to hold on to his shell until he's absolutely certain that the uh, Udis is there. He doesn't want to take a, a speculative shot because it's such a long time to reload. The Udis might have relocated. There he is. Okay, he is there. But it's a difficult shot because he's in the other side of that slope. And the shell would hit the reg line before it gets to him. Round out. Well, oh my god, he splashed him to death for 335 hit points. That's his fourth kill. And brings up the fighter badge. And the AT-15 is right at the back of the map. And I think the uh, enemy RT will probably be behind him somewhere. 
Okay, he's aiming for that spot, and he's indicated his uh, his target on the map, on the mini map. Oh, the enemy art is over the in the, the right side of the battlefield. The KV five's found him, and the KV five has actually just been hit by that um, that Lorraine, but he's firing back. Yeah, you can see the stun on the KV five, who's coming in for a ram kill. Oh, and that was a big mistake. You don't try to ram kill a heavy tank with an RT. Not unless, of course, it's a Fifi, the 105FH18B2, because that's also based on a heavy tank. Most of the other RTs are just too slow to ram, but um, that was a bit of a mistake there by the Lorraine, but he's just gifted a kill to the KV-5. Okay, now he's ready to shoot. Oh, it's going to hit the rock. Oh, it didn't. It overflew the rock and landed behind the AT-15. And he got 277 hit points off that shot. And that's made the AT-15 a one shot for the heavies now. They can finish him off with one shot. But uh, is Schneckermeister going to get a good um, shot in to take him out of the game? Well, he's almost ready. He's almost loaded. The other two are, um, are closing in, but I think they're a bit cautious about getting killed by the AT-15. Round out. And that's a kill shot. 264 wins the game. And that's his fifth kill for Schneckermeister. Good shooting. And a win eight of 10,127. So let's have a look at the end of battle stats. Oh, look at this. This is really special. He's not only picked up an ace tanker, he's got his first mark of excellence in the GW Tiger P. He picked up a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 24 in that battle. He picked up a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He got five. He got a gauls medal for doing more damage than 10 times the hit points of his own vehicle. But best of all, he picked up a high caliber because he dealt the most damage in the battle on his team. Uh, at least 20% of the enemy hit points so let's have a look at the team scores well highest damage 5007 hit points all together highest number of kills five highest base xp 1295 and most special of all first mark of excellence on the barrel let's have a look at detail well 14 shots fired five direct hits five penetration 12 splash damage he did damage of 5,007 hit points, of which 3,808 were at more than 300 meters. He hit nine of the enemy, which is three-fifths of the enemy team. But he actually killed five of the enemy, which is one-third of the enemy team. He actually did stun assistance damage of 699 hit points off 12 stuns. On a premium account, he earned 61,818 credits. And he got 10,000 credits for a personal missions payout. So after ammunition resupply, and it is rather expensive at this level, he was left with 19,018 credits. He received 1,943 XP, but it was times three for the first victory of the day, and he got a personal missions payout of 972, bringing his total to 6,801 experience points altogether. That's an absolutely huge total, absolutely massive. So well done indeed, Schneckermeister. So the snail champion, well, <laughs> he certainly is a snail champion now, isn't he? But uh, he certainly plastered the enemy with uh, shells. So, uh, <laughs> not snail shells, um, real shells. Uh, well done, Schneckenmeister. If you enjoyed this replay, please give it a like and do subscribe to our channel. And hopefully it'll be your replay that I'll be featuring in our next video.